Hello and welcome to Train Sim World, where today we are taking a very first look at the brand new Glossop line featuring the Northern uh, Class 323. So if you like this video, why don't you hit that like button and also subscribe, it really is appreciated. And the first thing we need to do is probably have a look around Manchester Piccadilly, because this is the first time we've seen it in the game. I mean it's another sort of major terminus station that we've uh, we've seen in the game and uh, i dare i say it, it's a little bit like the others where we have just uh, one kind of rolling stock that has tried to fill out the station but uh, it's not quite doing it knowing how busy it is to real life it's beautifully modeled the station don't get me wrong it's fan it looks absolutely fantastic and it's uh, also amazing to see that there's uh, a bit of traffic coming in and also nice to see that the uh, class 158 from Midland Mainline has also made it in so we do have two two bits of uh, two bits of stock running in and out of um, uh, Manchester Piccadilly there is just one service with the, uh, the class 158 so yeah, I, I, that's a tick it's nice to see that used but I think my point probably still stands around it being a little bit empty at times but hopefully the rest of the line doesn't disappoint so um, if you've uh, played Birmingham Cross City uh, you will be of course very familiar with the uh, class 323 obviously we saw it in its West Midlands Railway livery there and uh, as you can see the interior is pretty similar there's no major differences and you've got a little clock here which is quite nice um, but the rest of it looks yeah f fairly familiar if you've uh, already played uh, Birmingham Cross City so let's just bring up the map we've got a little bit of time obviously we've just left from Manchester Piccadilly and we will be going all the way to Glossop, which I will come on to because I have a view about the timetable. That's uh, uh, yeah, um, but as you can see, this is the full route itself. It's 13 miles long, so not necessarily the uh, the longest we've seen. Uh, certainly not by uh, not by quite some. But uh, as this is a shorter route with a uh, a bit of rolling stock that we've uh, already seen within the game it is at a uh, it does come at a lower price of uh, 20 pounds in uh, I'm not sure what the conversion is to uh, dollars or uh, euros so apologies about that but there is also a discount for those of you who already own uh, Birmingham Cross City on some platforms and that's worth noting some platforms they haven't been able to uh, offer this discount across I believe PlayStation uh, which is a bit of a shame but I believe that's a limit with Sony rather than uh, the publishers. So we've got our first station coming up, which is Ashbury's. So it uh, very, very much feels like an urban setting that we are in a minute at the moment, sorry. And then we will be uh, over the, the course of this run making our way out to the countryside. And we will probably will notice that transition. See the class 323 is a really great uh, actually we can see our stopping marker just a little bit further up. Let's keep it rolling. And there we go, bring it to a stop. We'll open those doors. So let's have a look around the station. Looks pretty nice, well detailed. Uh, for those of you who are interested in collectibles, we've got this little would be I think it's a flower pot uh, and there's the usual uh, maps to collect along the route and there are some others as well but this is running to uh, quite a, quite a tight time scale um, so you have to be pretty hot on leaving on time and departing as you can see we're already uh, about a half a minute behind and our next stop will be a guide bridge but that is in uh, 3.4 miles so We've got a, a little way to run yet. Just uh, give you a bit more of an overview of the uh, the timetable that we're running or the, the stopping pattern for this this service. So we've got Guidebridge next, Flowery Field, Newton for Hyde, Godley, Hattersley, Broadbottom, what a name, <laughs> Dinting, and then finally Glossop. 
So if we just jump back into the map here, obviously we've got Glossop, which is down here on, well, we've got Dinting in the middle, we've got Glossop on the right hand side, and up north you've got Hadfield. So this service does run all the way to Hadfield. However, the way that the timetable has been set up, you have to do it as a separate run. So you would have to end this run and then continue on free roam and take over the service. Um, and I just find that bonkers. It's just, it's not a full run of the, the line. You have to, and it's so immersion breaking that you have to jump out effectively out of the game and back in to continue with to complete that full run from Manchester to Hadfield I just it just baffles me the way that it's been done because the uh, the second part to this is is uh, you know a seven minute run all right get behind that yellow line uh, <laughs> uh, all right some players may have you know may not have uh, all the time in the world to do this uh, you know uh, quite long runs but seven minutes to add on to what is a pretty you know around a 30 minute service from manchester to uh, glossop um i just find it absolutely bizarre it's uh you where we, we will do it so you'll get to see what what happens but uh yeah not very impressed with that so you can see we've definitely started to make our way out of the urban setting and we're getting a little bit more into the countryside start to see a little bit more foliage but there's still plenty of uh, houses about as you can just see through the trees on the right hand side it's pretty quick uh, running on this route we are up to the permitted 60 and there are some stations that we don't stop at as we're passing through one now uh, this the Glossop line obviously used to be part of the now closed Woodhead line. I think a lot of players would have probably preferred the Woodhead line rather than the modern incarnation that we're playing today. But uh, I'm I'm not mad to see the the three two three being reused. I have to be honest. I I, I am a fan of it um, from Birmingham Cross City. So it's nice to see it in you know in shorter runs. So I, I'm, a, I'm somewhat torn. So we go into this, that's a weird continuary under that bridge. And we've got a 40 born inside there. And Guy Bridge is just in a couple of hundred yards, or eight or six hundred yards or so. We need to continue slowing for the 40s we can see another 323 there we go coming into the station here for guide bridge We've made probably a probably a little bit of time back up. We'll keep running. I don't know where our stop marker is. Can we see it? Uh, no stop marker for this one, so I think we'll just run up to the end of the platform. L to do. We'll jump out and go. We see the other three T three that's uh, running on this line. It does run at a uh, two per train hour, two, train, two trains per hour, sorry. Um, so you will see some other locomotives. We'll have a look at the yard here, the guide bridge yard. So we've got some container wagons. We've got the Royal Head treatment train wagons there as well. And uh, obviously a class 66. So nice to see some, some different layers being used. Um, I think that's definitely a positive. Right, we can be going now. So our next stop will be Flowery Field. Let's use the full power of this uh, Class 323. As you can see, it's got phenomenal acceleration. It is a hyper networker, so uh, it's all about this these uh, stop-start type uh, urban commuter runs.
go. Back to going to a 60. So there are a, uh, quite a few layers added in if you have um, other UK routes. Uh, so as you've seen already, we had the class 158 from Midland Mainline. We've got the class 66 in its uh, railhead treatment train uh, version from Southeastern High Speed. Also the 66 from, um, I think it's Southeastern High Speed as well. And uh, there are also the container wagons of, uh, from, I think that's Great Western Express. Uh, there's also um, some runs with, there's some rail tours, steam rail and uh, diesel rail tours, um, which are from Northern Trans Pennine, I believe, um, Spirit of Steam, and also, I'm not sure what the other, uh, Tees Valley, of course. So there's plenty of layers added, so it's it's nice to see the full, you know, dovetail games using the, you know, full library of locos that we're building up for the UK, which I think is a, a massive positive. But uh, you know, what's different? But it's got a station to the right. That's quite cool. Wonder what station that is. Um, but it's still not. You know, it doesn't fill out a, um, a Manchester Piccadilly, which is obviously. You know, is a massive terminus that would be, uh, you know, really quite bustling with trains in and out of all different kind of rolling stock and train operating companies. Coming a little bit hot here, we'll have to go into Notch 3. But those brakes are just phenomenal. Keep it rolling. A bit further down, and this is Flowery Field. What a name! Some good sounding, uh, again, no stop marker. So, this will do. Unlock those doors, we're trying to make up some time, and we're in a bush. So, let's uh, come out of that. So, again, okay, there's probably a route map there that you can uh, collect. We're not going to bother with that. Go get a good look at this uh, class three two three in its northern livery. It's uh, yeah, it does look pretty nice, I think. It's a well modelled train anyway, so uh, I, you know, wouldn't expect any less. We've got Newton for Hyde in just 0.6 of a mile, so that's uh, that's no distance at all. So 800 yards to our next stop. We'll come off the power. We're only 600 yards. But we're already doing 45. So even just in 0.6 of a mile, you know, we've been able to uh, pick up the speed really nice and easily. There we go. See the end of the platform here, which is Newton for Hyde. To be fair, it's, uh, it's been a nice looking route. There's a lot of, uh, you know, detailed scenery along the way. Definitely still feel like we're, we're sort of midway between urban and uh, uh, heading towards the countryside. Some of those doors. You really do have to be uh, on it with this uh, this run. It's quite a tight schedule. There we go. Don't get long to uh, look at these taking these uh, these stations, unfortunately. But away we go. Oh, that was terrible use of, of the horn there. <laughs> Never mind. So, Godly next. Yeah, these, uh, we had a bit of a, a run between, I think it was Ashbury's and Guidebridge, and uh, these uh, next couple of stations are all really quite close to one another. Yeah. 
Here we go. We can already see the, the next station ahead. We should be slowing. But the brakes on this are pretty damn good, so we don't have to worry too much. Even in notch one, it's taking a lot of speed off quite quickly. It's also nice to see a, uh, another train operating company, obviously, in the game as well now. With uh, Northern Trains, so it does uh, does offer, I think, some potential for the future, but... Uh, as of now, this is obviously just run the one route, so there's a route map, and I suspect that the newspapers will be another collectible. We've seen those before in other routes, UK routes. So, Hattersley and next, then we've got Broad Bottom, and then Dinting, and finally Gloss Up. So, we're making some really good progress here. Jump into notch four. Hattersley next. We've got a little bit of a longer run this time. Let me know in the comments down below whether uh, Glossop has, uh, you know, what your thoughts are on the Glossop uh, line and whether you uh, you may be uh, picking it up or not. Be interested to uh, hear your thoughts. There's another station we're going to be running through. Is this one abandoned or? It looks pretty abandoned to me. So you can see Hattersley up ahead. Just go into notch one and to start to slow. This time we've got a island platform which is something a little bit different. We're going to go past our stop marker, but it's okay. We're not that far past. We might actually just have made up some time. Oh, we're clipping, clipping there. A random piece of fence in the middle here. Interesting. And yeah, we've managed to make up the time. It is a nice looking livery. I do like it. And, uh, yeah, it's been a pretty good, nice run uh, once we've got out of Manchester. Nice doing a, a lot of uh, stopping along the way, keeps it, keeps it interesting. And away we go. So, one mile to Broadbottom, but we will not quite there at the 40 yet. That will be after Broadbottom. That's probably as we head across uh, the Dinting Viaduct, I'd imagine. So it really does pick up speed, this uh, 323. We're already up to 60. Just ease back now. Definitely feels like we've uh, transitioned into the countryside. So I give it, I give it a, yeah, I quite like that, that you've uh, gone from this really quite urban setting to uh, something that is feels quite rural. Do need to be slowing as broad bottom comes up. There we go. It's quite a nice looking station by the looks of it. There's our stop. 
Oh, we've gone past our stop marker. I saw the six. I thought that was an S. Never mind. Where is the three? Do we even see the three? Oh, yeah. How the hell am I ever going to see that behind that post? Is that realistic? I don't know about that. There's no chance I was ever going to see that. I think their placement's a bit questionable there. But, uh, yeah, let's look at this old station building. It's quite nice. Start locking those doors so we're ready to part on time. Yeah, quite impressive for that station, actually. There we go, and away we go for Dinting next. Two miles. There's a 40, so got to be careful not to uh, thunder past 40 here. We go just ease back. As we go over quite a nice viaduct here, that is not. Uh, that's not. Uh, Dinting viaduct, so we've got a, uh, a better one, a bigger and better one yet to come. But in fact, we are permitted to get up to 60, so let's use the power of this 323. So I guess it was 40 across that bridge, yeah? Or the viaduct. We are heading up a gradient. And it's quite yeah, quite a steep gradient this, 0.8 percent. I'll just ease back now. So uh, nice run so far. Got AWS warning here. I assume that's for us to slow down the 40, which we are doing. And also, I would imagine that it probably wants us to come to a halt. It does. Interesting. That uh, almost felt a little bit like uh, approach control, but in fact it wasn't. We were waiting for this uh, other 323 to uh, come out of Dinting because we head into single track. So that's quite cool. Nice that it brought us to a, uh, a stop. What we've run in there, let's just come off that. Can we get a good shot here? Oh, no. We're definitely not going to get a good shot at this rate. Yeah, we will. I think we got an acceptable uh, thumbnail. You'll know if uh, you're watching. If you're watching this, you would have hit that uh, hit that thumbnail. But we are in fact speeding. But uh, it was worth the thumbnail. <laughs> We're down to ten anyway. As we come into Dinting, we'll peel off to the right here. So uh, this station is uh, a bit of a V. So you use the right-hand platform if you're heading toward Glossop, or the left one if you are would be coming from uh, Hatfield. quite a tight curve so 
kind of expect it to be uh, 10 mile an hour. And there's the three star, uh, three star, three car stop marker, which pretty spot on there. And we'll unlock those doors. And we'll jump out and have a look at dinting. So clearly it used to be dual tracked uh, on this part because you can see we've got a bit of an abandoned platform there. Here's the other side and likewise we've got a double platform and uh, dinting uh, looks like signal box. Very nice. Nice looking station. Obviously much smaller than what it used to be. We've got to wait here about 40 seconds before we can head to uh, to Glossop which is all the way down to there. And then we'll do the second part, which is a whole new another service, to Hadfield. So uh, we will have done a full end-to-end -end run all the way from uh, Manchester to Hadfield via Glossop. Right, we can get lock in those doors. and way we can go so we're still under 10 miles an hour so got to be careful here and we're already speeding because I wasn't paying attention there you go a bit more braking and you can see got the indication there that we'll be running into a 25 so as soon as we uh, get past that and it is quite a, uh, a a downhill gradient towards Glossop, so we'll have to be a little bit careful on the brakes. There we go. There's 25. Put the uh, power back on. But as you can see, we uh, really do pick up quite speed quite quickly here, especially with the uh, downhill helping us along the way. This looks like a pretty neat bit of track here. There's the 45 sign actually. So once we clear that we'll... Uh, there we go. Let's see what, what we can get up to before we uh, get close to Glossop. I think we're in fact we're probably going to get up to 45 aren't we? Yep, no problem at all. And Glossop should uh, come into view any second now as we start to break. There's the AWS warning. Make sure we get down to 10 miles an hour in time. Interesting, we have no time to arrive at Glossop. But you can see the uh, just about make out the uh, 10, uh, 10 markers there. Which we are now we're down into. is a slow approach but we uh, got to be careful not to run into the buffers of course I'm surprised we don't have a time here to arrive at it's quite interesting We edge towards the uh, the end of the platform here. Start to break. Spot on. Let's uh, open those doors. We will shut the cab down. Uh, take the master key out. 
And there we go. There's the end of that run. However, of course, we've got the gold. We're going to return to free room. Uh, that power needs to be to three. Tail lights will turn off. Sorry, headlights will turn on. Tail lights will turn on. Oh. And now we need to run. All the way down to the other end of the platform. Get out of my seat. So that we can take over this service. Put the blind up. Master key in. Oh, wrong way. Unlock the doors. See, it's just all a little bit... It's, uh, you know... The doors shut halfway through. You have to open them again. It's just not a smooth experience. I would ex naturally expect this to be a, a single service. And now you can see we're on foot and we're going to do the had foot. I just think that's not very good. If, if In my honest opinion, it should just be one run from Manchester to Hadfield, not split into two parts. They've missed a real opportunity there. You haven't even got the brake on. What is going on? Let's check the other end. Yeah, we've got tail lights on. It's also start. I think we've got everything set up. Yep, headlights are on this end. Cool. We've got safety systems on. And now we're waiting to do this last part, which is all the way from Glossop to Hadfield. Which is going to be a very short run. Because we're not stopping at Dinton, we bypass that. Start to lock the doors so we're ready to go. Couple of seconds and we can be departing. There we go. And away we go. So again, we're held here at 10 miles now until we clear the station. And hopefully we can rock it back up to try and get up to 45 again. <laughs> yeah, I'm really not a fan of the uh, the um, this two-part service. So I guess... I guess where's where my head at in terms of what I think of this route. Uh, I don't mind that it's shorter. It offers something different for the class 323. It's nice to see it in a different train operating livery. Um, it definitely is a commuter service, so fits this loco obviously really nicely. It's it's enjoyable. Um, not a fan of the two part services. I keep banging on about the. Manchester Piccadilly uh, you can see that they've clearly tried to overuse the 323 I think they only had 17 units in total or at the moment the uh, uh, northern trains so is it a realistic use of all of those trains having so many 323s in, at Manchester at once no probably not uh, but kind of have to commend them for trying to keep uh, Manchester as as busy as possible um, other than that the route's Quite, quite nice scenery. Scenery looks really good. You get that transition from urban to uh, to rural, which is uh, yeah, which is quite nice actually. Uh, especially in what is really quite a short run, um, being only 13 miles. I like that the price has been reflect is reflective of that. I think that's a that's a positive um, and discount as well for those. So. I guess where am I with it? Uh, yeah, could it be better? Yes. Uh, is it where it's at due to the limitations of the rolling stock we have? Yes. Is it a fair price? Yeah, probably, I think. I don't know how much I would play this, though, in terms of once you've done this run, would I keep coming back to it? And I'm not sure. That's the bit I'm unsure about. I like the fact there are lots of different layers. Um, obviously you've got some freight services as well which is nice to see it's 
So, uh, yeah, we'll see. I'll, I'll continue to play this over the next couple of days. And uh, we'll, we will get a feel for what it's like playing it a little bit more regularly and see whether I get fed up, whether it's going to be a couple of runs and then never touch again. I don't know. Um, I think I'd be really interested to hear what your thoughts are in the comments after seeing this video. You know, has it has it put you off? Has it uh, has it made you think actually no, this route for the price is pretty good, or actually I like the route, but actually I'll wait for it to uh, be in a sale. So, we're only 0.8 of a mile away from Hadfield now. Obviously we've done we've done the run from Glossop back to Dinting that we're just coming out of. And this is the stretch from Dinting to uh, Hadfield. So we can speed up once we clear the 40 board. Though we will quite quickly be coming back down to 15. Or are we 10 all the way? Yeah, there we go, we can speed up now. But will we shortly get back down to 15? So 1% gradient, so we'll keep the, the power on actually, but mindful that we'll need to start to be sl uh, start slowing in in a short while. Come off the power now. We'll have the speed will come off naturally anyway. And actually, we need to be slowing for 15 here. Which is no problem, we'll get AWS, which we acknowledge, and there's the 15 board, and now we can see the end of the station for Hatfield. I think we're going to be a little bit late into Hatfield actually. Or just about on time, maybe. <laughs> Never mind. So, interesting little route, this. And this is where the wood headline would have continued, of course. There's the stop marker on our left hand side. And we'll bring it to stop, open those doors, and that will conclude our run with the 323. So, hopefully, you've enjoyed this one. If you have, uh, please do hit that like button and uh, also consider subscribing. And uh, last thing to do is, of course, see what medal we ended up with. Uh, of course, it's the gold, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye bye for now.